Films in Focus with David Sterrett is underwritten by The Movie House, your destination for first-run Hollywood and independent movies, and a digital portal to the Met Opera, National Theater Live, and special events worldwide in Millerton, New York, and on the web, themoviehouse.net. David Sterrett is the editor-in-chief of the Quarterly Review of Film and Video, contributing writer at Cineast, film professor at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Robin Hood Radio's very own critic. We're possessive. He joins us weekly. The films Transit, Birds of Passage, and Us. As I said, it's a poem. Almost a haiku, but not quite. Quite. Anyway, yeah, three films, but in other ways they're very different, although each one of them has a whole lot of vibes which um, sort of relate to today's uh, kind of social, cultural, political conditions and some of the troubles in the world, even though in every other respect they're, they're very, very different movies. Uh, and uh, to begin with the movie called Transit, this is by Christian Petzold. It's actually a German and French co-production. Uh, Petzold rather likes one-word titles like uh, Barbara and Phoenix. Uh, and now we have Transit. And this is based on a novel by Anna Segers, which has really been a very long-standing uh, influence on Christian Petzold. Uh, and it is um, uh, a sort of a almost kind of a timeless kind of a story, although it takes place in a specific period of, 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 of history. Uh, it, it has very much a sort of a feeling of today about it. Uh, it takes place um, during World War II. And we have a young man who is fleeing the Nazi occupation of France, uh, which uh, is very much in progress. And his name is Georg. And uh, he manages, he's in Paris, but near the beginning of the movie, he manages to get to Marseille. Uh, Marseille, however, uh, is only a point of transit. You can only sort of be in Marseille if you're going to go elsewhere, uh, you know, unless you're an actual resident of Marseille. And that means you have to be able to prove that there's another country to which you are going and which is going to take you in when you get there. Uh, so uh, Georg uh, has come upon at the very beginning of the movie uh, some documents uh, from another person who is now dead. Uh, and this other person, uh, Georg, has gotten a hold of um, the person's diary and uh, other sort of documents. So all he really has to do now to get out of Marseille and get to safety uh, in another country uh, is to hand in uh, hand in this other person's, this dead person's uh, papers and, and prove that he is the dead person, take on the dead person's identity. So there he is, and he's planning to do this. This is the transit to which the movie refers, uh, the title of the movie, I mean, and uh, and there he meets some other people, uh, one of whom is a woman who is looking for her missing husband, who is the very dead person whose papers Georg now has and whose identity Georg has now taken on. She knows, obviously, that Georg is not her husband. She does not even know her husband is dead. So anyway, this is uh, the basic setup for the story and the movie uh, it, you know, explores various unfoldings of this situation. So we have here a story that is very much about being a refugee because that is basically what Georg is uh, and about uh, the uh, treachery that can come about uh, when documents are required by people who are your enemies. Uh, there is a certain amount of coincidence in this movie uh, such as, for example, uh, Georg getting a hold of these papers in the first place and assuming the identities of, the, of this, this, this dead writer uh, whose wife he then meets who is looking for that, that dead writer. Uh, this is kind of coincidence but Petzold kind of works off of this this is sort of deliberate because uh, even though this is, as I said, a story which is very much about refugee status and about looking for safety in a treacherous world and about the need for documents and papers and the ability to prove an identity which may not even be an accurate identity. I mean, we can think in all kinds of different ways about what goes on at the American-Mexican border nowadays and, you know, not to mention many other places in the world, including Europe where there's all kinds of strife uh, involving refugees and, and trade transit and the ability to get from one country to another uh, transit the movie puts all of this into into this 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 World War two context uh, but it, it it has all these resonances and reverberations of today and the very contrivances of the movie the very coincidences of the movie are kind of I think meant to point up uh, the absurdities that arise in these situations and they are tragic absurdities they are not comic absurdities uh, the movie is very very well acted uh, Franz Rogowski as the main character 
character and Paula Beer as the uh, the woman who is um, the, the searching for her dead husband are excellent, as is the entire uh, supporting cast. Uh, it's a movie which I don't find as kind of scintillating or searing as a lot of critics do. Uh, it's been receiving rave, rave reviews, and Christian Petzold has a terrific track record, and he's a very fine filmmaker. I don't find him to be in the top ranks of today's uh, international filmmakers, but he's a very fine one. And Transit is a very absorbing and serious film, a uh, serious-minded film, even though ultimately I didn't find it as captivating uh, as, uh, as, as a number of my fellow critics did. I still certainly do recommend it. Anybody looking for a thoughtful melodrama will have a good time, uh, if that's the right word, uh, watching Transit. Uh, turning to Birds of Passage, uh, it has even more uh, obvious uh, overlaps with today's world. Birds of Passage is very much a movie about the, the drug trade. Uh, and uh, specifically uh, drug trafficking uh, in Colombia, uh, where a whole lot of that stuff evidently still goes on. But this movie comes at the whole thing from an unusual angle, which is that this movie takes place mainly in the 70s, starts in the 60s and really sort of travels through the 70s in a series of episodes. And it also takes place not in the big city, uh, not in Medellin, for example, uh, and doesn't deal with today's cartels. Uh, it deals with uh, the the indigenous drug trade sort of out in the boondocks. It deals with people who are trafficking this stuff outside the big city, uh, moving stuff in the directions of the big city and the directions of what became the, 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 the mighty cartels of, of, of today's drug world in, in, in Latin America. Uh, but it, 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 again, it has this very unusual uh, setting for this kind of a story. It also has an unusual structure. Uh, it's structured very much as a ballad divided into separate episodes, which have uh, each one has its own title uh, and um, the, the, the titles are let's see wild grass the graves prosperity the war and limbo and each one of those of those those uh, those titles of, of the sort of stanzas of this ballad uh, is, is quite accurate and describes what's going to be happening next. And it really deals with a couple of people who get involved almost by accident in the drug trade. It has to do partly with the Peace Corps. Oh my gosh, there's all this uh, marijuana around and there are these Peace Corps people and that's really what they want to get a hold of is a whole bunch of marijuana. That's their real interest in being down here. Uh, and then things escalate from there. And we have all the things that one uh, would expect uh, to be uh, in a story of the illicit drug trade. There's all kinds of feuding among different factions and feuding within different factions. Uh, quite a bit of violence and death, although this is not an exploitation film uh, and it does not traffic in heavy-duty gore. In a way, the whole thing is kind of like an unusual gloss on uh, uh, Breaking Bad, which of course dealt with the drug trade in America. Uh, in a way, this is sort of showing where, in this case, it's almost entirely marijuana, but it's showing where all the sort of drugs originally sort of started out from. And it shows the escalation of the drug scene, starting again in the late 60s. This is very much when the drug scene in the United States started to change drastically, um, thanks in part to the hippies and their very, uh, very, very strong interest in drugs of all different kinds. And again, this does not deal in any sense with the American scene or even with the European scene. It deals very much with the Latin American scene, but it all ties in together. So uh, I found Birds of Passage to be a very, very interesting suspense movie, uh, a very interesting movie of, uh, of treachery and melodrama and intrigue and a very, very well acted movie. Uh, the people interestingly are not speaking Spanish through most of the movie. They are speaking uh, indigenous dialect. And uh, this lends the movie a whole lot of authenticity, as do uh, the main performers, uh, all of whom uh, are, are just excellent and who do a very, very uh, powerful job of, uh, of, of conveying what I think is something very close to the realities of that era and the realities of that scene. The movie was co-directed uh, by Ciro Guerra and Cristina Gallego, a very, very gifted people and again acted by a terrific cast. Uh, it's not a movie for the faint-hearted. It deals again with the violence and treachery of the drug scene in pretty explicit ways. But this too uh, is not, uh, it's not just, that's not the reason for its existence. I think its reason for its existence is to cast some light on an aspect of what still goes on today, the international drug trafficking and all the horrors attended there too. Uh, but it deals with that uh, from from an, an angle that gives us some historical perspective that maybe we don't usually get from movies on this sort of subject. And I found it a very, very well-made and very, very, uh, very compelling movie in all kinds of ways.
Which brings us to our third and final film for today, Jill, a movie called Us. And this is the second feature film by Jordan Peele, who is now starting to emerge as one of the really major African-American filmmakers of our time. Uh, He is not yet a Spike Lee. Spike remains the greatest of them all. Uh, But then again, Spike's been around for a whole lot longer and has made a very, very, very large number of films. I am happy to say he's still very active on the scene. But Jordan Peele is probably the most promising of the rising newcomers and he's certainly reaping a whole lot of success so far and interestingly so far in his career uh, as a writer director he appears to be focusing very directly on the horror movie genre uh his previous film with the very interesting title get out uh had largely to do with well, <laughs> with a sort of a party uh and a sort of a bunch of rich white people uh where there are a bunch of african american people who are also present on the scene and who discover that there is all kinds of horror going on even beyond the usual horrors of, uh, of white dominance of, of any scene that they happen to be around in. Uh, we have African-Americans and whites and monsters and whatnot, and the whole movie is at once a reasonably effective horror movie uh, and a very effective sort of extended metaphor about black-white relations in today's America. Uh, again, I say reasonably effective horror film. I did not find Get Out all that effective as a horror film. Uh, I found it sort of a little bit too playful to be really effective on that score. And I didn't feel the movie was as successful as a lot of people did. Still, a very interesting debut for Jordan Peele uh, as a writer-director. And now we have Us, which I think is much more effective as a horror film. I will also mention right now, much more explicit and sort of horrifying as a horror film. Uh, and uh, he he progresses on his way, Jordan Peele does. I think he is turning into a very interesting talent. And I have uh, high hopes for his future we need a whole lot more really good African-American filmmakers who manage to get their movies. It's an uphill battle. Uh, black people face an extra challenge in the movie scene, as in so many other scenes in America. He's managing to get his movies into movie theaters in very big ways and to get a whole lot of attention for them, and that's very important. So again, a very promising rising star. Uh, so what is Us about? Uh, it is about a family, and we, at the very beginning, just like Get Out, we have an opening scene which sets up a whole lot of tension and mystery, which is then re- resolved more or less as the movie proceeds. We have a family. Uh, we have actually a mother and a father and a little girl. And they're at an amusement park, and the little girl wanders off on her own, which she's not supposed to do, and ends up in a sort of house of horror where she encounters another little girl who looks exactly like her. Big scream, cut to the present day. That takes place quite a few years ago. The present day, the little girl is now grown up, has a family of her own, and we now start to unravel a little bit of that mystery and also present day mysteries which are going on. What transpires, and these are not spoilers because this is all quite early in the movie, uh, is that this family starts to be menaced by another family, which again, looks exactly like them. We have mommy, daddy, brother, sister, and a sort of doppelganger family looks exactly like them, except the doppelganger family is evil. And a whole lot of the movie Us is basically a home invasion film. Uh, That doppelganger family invades the home, terrorizes the family within, and uh, there's a whole lot of mayhem and death and all kinds of other awful, awful, awful stuff. It reminded me a little bit of Michael Haneke's uh, quintessential uh, home invasion movie, Funny Games, of many years ago. So uh, that is basically what we have here. A large part of the movie is this home invasion film. Eventually, that phase of the movie uh, goes away and we get outside the house into a larger world where we find out that it's not only black people, because this is an African-American family, who are undergoing this horror. It is also white people because we now meet a white family and they too have a doppelganger family that invades the home and terrorizes and tortures and kills and so forth and all of that stuff. So it's happening to white people as well as black people and eventually we're out into the larger community where we find out it's happening all over the place and there turn out to be astounding numbers of these uh, of, of, of these doppelgangers who are terrorizing and torturing and doing all kinds of horrible things to white people and black people alike. 
Uh, what does all this signify? It definitely signifies something. At one point early in the film, when someone is able to confront one of the evil doppelgangers and actually ask the question, who are you? The answer is, we are Americans. So all of this is meant to be some kind of very, very large sociocultural par parable or allegory, a uh, kind of a symbolic tale. But I didn't find it really held together at that level. It's kind of hard to parse, kind of hard to figure out exactly how all the strands fit together and exactly all the things that they're meant to signify. And I suppose that's part of the interest of the movie, is trying to figure these things out and then think about them after the movie is over. When you're actually watching the movie, these things are there. You know that there are symbols and metaphors going on, and it's really interesting to try to figure them out. But what us is mainly is a very horrifying horror film that is very effective on all the kind of technical levels that horror films are supposed to be effective on. Uh, suspense, shock, surprise. If you're looking for those things, definitely go see us by the rising filmmaking star Jordan Peele. If your stomach is a little bit queasy about true horror in the movies, then it's a movie to stay away from. Maybe his next movie won't be quite so powerful on those terms, or maybe it won't be a horror movie at all. It remains to be seen, but I'll be really interested in following Jordan Peele's career. And that is my partially horrifying story this week, Joe. For which we thank you, as ever, David Starrett, Films in Focus, the films Transit, Birds of Passage, and Us. Music